We're starting with Syracuse Orange Lacrosse up against the Providence Friars, and there's a good reason for that because there's no better way to start a cheery sports cast than showing a local team beat the absolute snot out of an overmatched opponent. Our new alternate captains are uh, James Marsden, Brian Lashoff, and Anders Jarens, none of whom were alternate captains at the beginning of the year. Uh, we all sort of raise an eyebrow with the rotating captain system in the first place. If you're rotating every single letter on this team, uh, Tim, I mean, as a former coach yourself, does it cheapen the honor at all? Well, a little bit. To me, in, in my opinion, it does. With Group A supremacy on the line, they took on the United States in what was the most watched television event in in Canadian history and yes we do have more than one television up there. Now this might seem a little hard to believe and to be honest with you I'm still wrapping my head around it myself but the plan is to have a full American Hockey League size ice rink constructed on this dirt infield right here behind me. To tell us more on how the system works. Tyler? John, under the APR, each player on a team is worth up to two points. They get one point for staying at the same school and another point for being in good academic standing. Having Don Cherry as your coach, I wonder, can you even enjoy that or are you too used to having a celebrity coach here in Kingston? Oh, no, for sure you enjoy Don Cherry. The Blackhawks take their first Stanley Cup since 1961 in six games. Jonathan Taves is named playoff MVP and there's a local connection. Former Syracuse Crunch defenseman Brent Sopel gets his first ring at the age of 33 and Kristen, the man sitting beside you, Jeff Lang said gets to cry for the next year as the Soul Flyers fan in the building. Well, uh, whatever. Yabo doing a good job of defending that right and Yablonski going down here. Hockey is still the only major team sport where pummeling your opponent with your bare fist won't get you kicked out of a game. One man who knows it well is former Boston Bruin Rick Smith. We were the big bad Bruins in Boston and, and we built an identity around it. Rick Smith on the bottom. Maloney's sitting on him. And like most players, he'll defend that part of the game. In hockey, two guys can say, look, we're going to have to duke it out here and get this over with and, and kind of set the record straight. And especially here in central New York, fans won't be quick to disagree. There's always fighting hockey. It's, that's where it should be. Back in the old days, there was a lot of goons. <laughs> it's part of the game. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm here for. So you come here specifically for that kind of stuff, the fighting? And that helps. The War Memorial here at Syracuse has generally gotten pretty good crowds, and when it comes to marketing hockey in central New York, fighting can be one of the biggest draws. For a hockey team, it's very important to build the type of team that fits the town, whether it's Rochester or Syracuse or Binghamton or even Buffalo. Um, they're hardworking communities, in many cases blue-collar communities, that like work ethic. Atkinson knows about marketing this side of the game. The Americans' website greets you with a photo of a fight, even though Rochester is actually one of the best goal-scoring teams in the AHL. He's got a simple explanation for it. The fans walk away thinking that, well, if you're going to push us around, we're going to retaliate. So, and that's not necessarily a bad thing to market. So far, so good in central New York, at least. Tyler King, NCC Sports. Now, even with all the injury trouble that has plagued Orange Nose tackle Art Jones, some pretty smart people were still pegging him as a third or fourth round NFL draft pick at the lowest. Well, I hope you took the under. It took until the fifth round for the Baltimore Ravens to finally select Jones 157th overall. After 2008, when he had 60 tackles for the Orange, plenty of scouts thought he'd be a first round lock, but you can understand why that didn't happen. He's coming off a torn meniscus, torn pectoral, and knee surgery that cut this past season short. Despite all that, he still leaves as SU's career leader in tackles for loss with 38 and a half. The first Orange player to be selected in the draft was actually wide receiver Mike Williams in the fourth round, but since he quit the team in the middle of of last season, he doesn't get his own story. Well, with the Syracuse Chiefs coming off their first winning season since 2000, hopes are high for the end of another drought, getting back to the playoffs for the first time since 1998. Can't believe it's been that long. So far, so good with the Chiefs at 11 and 5 and winners of the first two of a four game home series with the Rochester Red Wings. Chase Lambin just came back from a year in Japan and says sayonara to that ball. Opposite field home run, 1 0 Syracuse. Rochester responds with two runs until Anthony Slama throws the ball and the lead away. Eric Bruntlett scores and ties the game. It stays that way until the bottom of the 13th inning when Josh Weitzel, the walk-off two-run home run. Josh Weitzel, he was drafted by the Montreal Expos, hit just one home run last year with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, he's got two this year for Syracuse. Four to two the final. Syracuse is 12 and five, first place in the International League North. Well, the Buffalo Sabres are back in the playoffs for the first time since 2007. And even though they're facing a number six seed in the Boston Bruins, it'll be no easy task. Buffalo was two and four against Boston in the regular season. But you know who wasn't playing in two of those Boston wins? 
a certain goaltender named Ryan Miller. Game one at the HSBC Arena, Syracuse native Tim Connolly back in the lineup for the Sabres. Thomas Vanek opens the scoring. Let's let Rick Jenneret call it. Here's Roy, dropped it back, Vanek scores! And Mark Recchi would reply for Boston. Let's let RJ tell you what happened next again. Craig Rive, the game-winning goal for the Sabres. 2-1 Buffalo takes game one. Ryan Miller makes 38 saves in the victory. Well, that'll do it for NCC Sports. Stay tuned, though, when we come back. It's certainly going to be an interesting season coming up. Expectations were fairly low last year, and obviously the team was able to get a decent number of people on their side. The question will be, where will expectations be this year, and how will the team be able to match up to them? You're right, Tyler, and I think that, uh, as you mentioned, with the depth, what are some of the key losses for the Orange in the upcoming season? Well, that's the thing. It was one of the themes last year that, unfortunately, a lot of players just outright left the team. And we've got another one this year in a wide receiver kick returner, Mike Jones, who was, of course, a very key cog in that offense and on special teams as well. One loss that certainly isn't Doug Marone's fault, but fullback Carl Cutler has been injured, tore his ACL, and he was someone that Doug Marone had talked up very much going into spring practice. So even though you don't usually think about a starting fullback as being a key part of an offense, uh, in this case it could be very big they're going to shift one of their linebackers over to fullback to replace Cutler and with the shifting of the positions the most important position being the quarterback position who else is in competition and what should we expect from the quarterback position this season well you'd think it would be just a simple issue of Ryan Nassib coming in to replace you because of course he was your backup last year did get some playing time and impressed a lot of fans I'm sure you would admit but of course that was what we thought last year that we would be heading in with Ryan Nassib as the starting quarterback so you never really know and word is that Charlie Loeb has been getting plenty of snaps so far in spring practice and I wouldn't be surprised if we see I'm sure you wouldn't want me to refer to it this way but I wouldn't be surprised to see another quarterback controversy in Orange football this year well thank you very much Tyler it's